Hey, what's up? This is Austin, uh, aka Midream. You can find me on Twitch. You can find me on Spotify. I really, truly appreciate any and every Spotify follow that I can get. I'm trying to hustle that that way. I'm trying to hustle that right now so I can uh, up my viewer count and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so please, please, please give me a follow on Spotify. Um, and okay, so while we're here, check it out. Uh, people have been asking me how I do a certain thing, and this is how it looks pretty much. Check it out. I did this. Right? It's got this beat. It's a really, really fast way to remix yourself, create a new section, and then jump back into the section that you had recently remixed uh, without without stopping to do anything, without stopping to initialize something. Like you just jump right into it. It's so good. So you see what I did there on the first example. I took incoming vocals and I sampled them into a sampler with note on presses, right? And then I pitched it up and down in a matter of seconds. Now, this can be pretty hard to do. And then in the in the second example, you saw that I actually did the same thing, but with the, the master track. So I, I did immediate like French house style sampling. I, I made it in a Max for Live patch, and now I'm giving that to you. All of my all of my Twitch subscribers and all of my Patreon subscribers, you're gonna find this in the Discord uh, right now, right as this video is uploaded, you will find this waiting for you to download and to play with at your leisure, Le leisure, leisure. And I'm going to show you how it works too. Check it out. I've got, I've got this audio clip loaded up right here, right? This is a track that I have coming out at the end of the month. So another reason to follow me on Spotify. Me. It's a collaboration with Liz Vega, right? Me. Let's say we want to chop and sample this, but we want to do it live as we're performing, right? Cool. So we have a we have a track, right? I'm gonna start it right there. That's where we're gonna start our sampling. And I have this this machine that I built, this Chop Machine Audio 01, right? So I'm gonna drag it onto here, and you realize as we play it, the audio goes into the device, but it stops the audio from going out. Now I did that on purpose. Uh, I'll show you what we do to get around that in a moment. Before we do that, we're also going to take out the, uh, the other side of this effect that I made. It's called the Chop Machine MIDI. 
So we're bringing them in the chop machine MIDI. Now, the first thing that we do is we need to initialize the machine for usage. I'm, I might fix this in the future. There are going to be a bunch of bug fixes coming up. This is version one. It, it works very well already. I've, I've, I've tested it in performance and it works great. It works better than this other VST that I was playing with that had a bunch of bugs and stuff like that. So here it is, the Midream chop machine. And this is number one of four. Uh, as you can see over here on the, on the MIDI send portion, this is also one of four. And I have, I have four different instances of this, a one, two, three, and four. So you can use this four different times in a project. Um, and you can also double up, like, like you can have different instances of number one and they'll all link up to number one, you know? So all of the number ones link together and all of the number twos link together, etc. So check it out, this is how it works. You wanna start by pressing this button or by pressing C1. C1 on your, on your keyboard is the same as this button right here. And when you press it, it clears all of the things inside of it and sets up the sets up the sampler for sampling some audio coming in. So now we're ready to go. Now this this audio, it gets played and it it does not go through. I did this on purpose. Check this out. What we're going to do is we're going to control G as as we're looking at this at this at this instance of of the VST. And now we, uh, we right clicked and we created another chain. So now you have a, a chain where the audio flows through, right? So the audio is flowing through the secondary chain. I'm going to call this the through chain and I'm going to call this top one, the sampler chain. So check it. Cool. So now we can hear the audio going through and then we have the sampler that's blocking the audio going through. So it's, there's no audio coming out of the sampler yet. Now, after we've clicked that button, and we've we've done that plenty of times, or again, you can press C1 on your push, on your launch pad, on your keyboard, even on your computer keyboard. If you have it enabled up here in the, in, in the upper right, you can enable your computer keyboard as a MIDI keyboard and type in notes like that. And that's what I'm gonna be doing during this presentation, but during the this stuff, during all this stuff, I can show you how it, um, I can show you how it works a little more effectively with the push. Now that this is all here, we, we're basically ready to go. I'm going to enable this MIDI track, um, a record arm, and I'm gonna open up a clip so we can see what notes we're playing. Okay, cool, there we go. So now I'm playing in the range that I'd like to. Now this machine, it has a certain range of functionality. I'll get into that in a moment, but for now C1 is the clear all button. So we have to start by pressing that. And now for the rest of the set, um, the machine is ready to be played with and used. But as soon as you open it, that's the first thing you do, right? Now, the second thing you do is you sample. So check this out. Um, the, the audio is gonna th flow through the, the through channel and it's also gonna flow into the sampler. Now, as it flows into the sampler, we can press any of these notes, right? And as I pause it, feel me so pretty instantly we have the ability to chop and mangle these 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 samples really really easily really quickly for the duration of your note press I'll, I'll play this background clip again I'm gonna press a or uh, C1 over here to uh, to clear my samples so now those samples are gone those 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 audio buffers are cleared so so now as I as I play this through again you realize like I'll, I'll click a note really quickly and then I'll hold one down. I'll hold one down for longer. I'll hold it down for even longer. And I'm gonna, and, and I could do this while it's, while the audio's still playing. Cool, so now check it out. The really short note that we pressed, as we hold it down, it's gonna loop the length of that little short area that that we made. So it's also kind of a looper, right? For the length of the of the time that you that you held it down initially is the length of that sample. And once it reaches the end of the sample, it'll loop it again. So this is this is built for performance because. Also, uh, check this out. Uh, pitch bend, and I'll, I'll show you over here. Um, pitch bend. So 
as, as you, so as you can see the pitch bend actually actually bends the bends bends the speed of the audio downward and upward so you can kind of like automatically get these really cool formant pitch changey effects on any type of audio that you pass through it's really really fun to play with live so if you have anything that can input notes and and have pitch bend data then then you can do some really wild stuff with this and there's one more thing that this audio effect does if anything is is played above a certain velocity like like these for instance here let's 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 start a little thing to load in a couple of samples right so i'm now we're going to add some pitch bend so check this out as we as we enable our pitch bend over here So you can get these kind of effects live. Uh, so you can remix yourself immediately after playing something and you can create whole new sections based upon this. There's one more thing that, that we can really play with here. This this MIDI machine here, we can chain this, this MIDI off like the other one and send the MIDI so that it continues afterward to go do other stuff. We can trigger multiple things with the same key presses, you know? So that's super fun to play with. Um, also, over here in MIDI effects, you can take something like velocity, take the like the high point and make it a lot lower, and turn that on and off. So we can do this thing where... So by turning this on, we effectively lower each of these MIDI velocities because right now they're all at like 100 or something. Yeah, they're at 100. Um, if 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 we have this velocity right before the MIDI machine, then as we turn it on, it takes all the velocities from 100 and puts them puts them at 40. So now everything is below the halfway point of 64, and any velocity under 64 would trigger the same sample in the same note, but it'll play it in reverse instead. So now you can have a button where all of your samples are playing, then you can have a button mapped to this velocity, and when you turn it on, all of a sudden, all the samples are playing in reverse. So depending on what you what you put together, you can really create some incredible uh, moment, like momentary changes of 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 feel, of vibe, with with like all of a sudden it's a little bit different, different enough to create a new section with potentially, you know, or to create some some variation. You feel me? So any velocity above 64 plays it uh, forward. Any velocity below plays it backward. And I think it might get inversed if you play it. If you if you record it under the 64 and then play it above, I think it might inverse that property. Um, I have some troubleshooting to do on that, but it works. It, it, it works. So that's, that's all I'm worried about. Also, over here, so the reason why the sampler only outputs the samples that you sample is so that you can now go into like audio effects, for instance and put some reverb or like a high pass or something on the on the actual samples right so so you can do something like this for it so that you know the example is complete shit it sounds like ass but um the idea is you can you can have the original audio be unaffected and have your samplers you can high pass it low pass it reverb it add some delay add some compression make it louder make it quieter uh with like a i would i would for sure throw a utility in here so that i can control like the the volume of all of the stuff going on and you know you can really affect the samples that you have coming out of this chop machine and I think I think that's super super fun to play with. It's a it's a it's a great effect, great effect. Uh, I do it a lot during live performances. And check this out. This is this is how this works. So you see, 
I have this, this, this pink button on the APC, and when I press it, I do a bunch of other stuff, and now I go to the sampler, and I have all of these samples ready to play around with and remix, right? So I do this by doing this. I, um, I'll start with a note, right? And I'll make it, generally, I'll make it into a quarter note. Is this a quarter note? And now, as I, as I do something like this, I can play this clip. And when I play this clip, every quarter note, it's going to sample a new segment and plug it into a new note for the, for the sampler, right? So this is loading up every one of those as I'm doing other stuff, as I'm playing some new drums, as I'm singing over this, as, my hand, as I'm busy doing something, the sampler is sampling in the background. And now it stopped, it ended. So I sampled the segment of the song as I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. And then let's say, let's say the song... You know, we, uh, we, we, we faded out or something. It's like, yo, the song has ended. Thank you very much, crowd. Thank you. That was so cool. That was so fun. Now it's time to rubber -ru -ru remix. I, I loop that. I add some percussion, you know, just instant gratification of like, yo, I'm gonna remix what we just did live and it's gonna blow your mind. That's what this machine does. So that's a that, that's a really, really, really fun way to kind of like set up the looper to work automatically for you. And again, you can have four of these in in each instance of, of Ableton. You can match a bunch of different ones to one of these ones or or have have your samplers in different places. I'm I'm sh I'm sure that, that people will get really, really creative with it. And regardless, like yo, check it out. This is it. This is what it does. I think it's super fun to play with. If you like what you see, uh, you know, sub to me on Patreon, sub to me on Twitch. Every Patreon and Twitch sub gets access to any device I make. There are also like 13 and a half hours of royalty-free music for you to play around with. There are, there are stems and sample packs for you to play with that are, you know, free, uh, uh, free for profit, I think is, is the word. Uh, they're, they're for profit stems, for profit beats. You can take them and grab them for profit. And it's like, it's like five bucks on Patreon, five bucks on Twitch. You get a, a, a bunch of cool stuff. So, you know, starting with this, I think, I think this is already more than a $5 investment. You know, this is like, I'd, I'd pay probably 20, 30 bucks for this. So this plus a whole lot of other stuff for five bucks. I think it's pretty solid. Oh yeah. The, the sample range. So the, the range on these C1 is clear. And then every note, there are 64 notes above that. So I don't know where that ends. Like I can count like one, two, three, four, like up to 64. But C1 is the clear button. And I have that always set to the bottom left-hand corner of my push. So when I'm playing around, it's really easy to press the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, or I'll, 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 alternatively, you can, because if, if you have like three or four of these in a set, like in my project, I'm, I, have, I have three of these. Uh, you can MIDI map this to one button, right? So, so one button clears all of your samplers. So when you open up your default set template, you can click your one button that initializes all of your samplers, and you're ready to go. Um, I I find that to be super uh, uh, super helpful as well. And I hope that you have fun. I hope that you have a lot of fun. I'm pretty sure that's it. If if anybody has questions, please ask me in the comments please ask me in discord ask me on twitter at midream underscore la you can hit me up in the instagram dms it's all chill and anybody who doesn't have money to sub on patreon or to check it out on twitch to, to sub on twitch and get into my my sub only discord check it you can rebuild this yourself um this is generally how it looks uh i would say uh the the, the one super important thing is to look at look at how I did my so each of these is an individual note and this this karma is a max for live external so I would recommend looking into karma and this is this is it each one of these are identical this is every note every note gets one of these and then this is everything outside of the note and yeah if 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 you can read max patches if you know what you're looking at then you can rebuild this yourself man like you don't got a sub this is how it's done it's right here in front of you so uh check it out but if you'd like to just grab it 
then you know, come on into the Discord, give it a grab. Any questions you have, happy to help. And any ideas for different plugins, I would love to hear about. I already have an idea for my next one. I'm going to be working on that soon. But any ideas that you have, please tell me. And I think that about covers it. Yeah, I think that about does it. So again, please follow the Spotify. Love to see you on Twitch. Uh, I play music, produce, make art all the time. And yeah, uh, happy sampling. Peace.